Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining Jupiter, our Jupiter launch. I'm Rahul Bakshi, head of product, and I uh, welcome you all to uh, the launch event and the opportunity to share with you some of the new features and functionality that we're releasing uh, with this great release. So today I'm going to be covering a couple of key themes. We're going to be talking about the customer experience and new detection and response capabilities that we're delivering to our customers and partners. And when we think about customer experience, we really think about a couple of key dimensions. The first is really about time to value. How do we make it easier for our customers to get to value faster? And that's really through delivering a very intuitive, modern UX and giving the customers the tooling they need to get there. And the data onboarding automation is a great example of that. And something else that's really important to our customers is delivering them with the right information so they can make the right decisions and react faster. An activity monitor really pays down that promise by giving them visibility into the event data that's coming into the system so they can act and manage upon it. And then last but not least, it's really about making sure the customer experience is holistic throughout the platform. And it's not, they don't have to have constant thinking about how to interact with it per module so they get a consistent look and feel. And Data Dictionary really delivers on that promise. In the world of detection and response, it's all about arming our customers with tools and technologies so they can surface detections faster, find the new uh, threats in the wild faster, and that's really where Live Alert Channel comes into play. Also, it's all about response now and enabling customers to make smart decisions where they can actually deliver automated response so they can drive down their MTTR. And that's where the, the work we've done with EDR integrations and bringing that into the platform and automating responses through Sniper natively really pays down on that, that key deliverable that customers have been asking for. And then last but definitely not least is really how do we meet the analysts where they need to be met in the product? How do we give them the right workflow? How do we enable them with the right custom, customizable, customizability so they can accomplish their tasks faster and with more confidence? And what you're going to see with tabular view and on-demand case creation are those capabilities. So let's jump right in and dig into these more. We're going to start with, with data onboarding automation, which is really the whole concept of collection. And when you think about data collection and setting up devices, customers want to do this with two key dimensions. They want it to be intuitive so that they can drive through that process efficiently and effectively. And they want to have the right confidence interval to know that they've configured these devices properly. And that's really what we've done when we think about the reimagined onboarding process we've delivered for our customers in this release. This is really where we've removed a number of steps, taking it from 12 clicks down to three. So customers are getting to value faster and able to surface detections more efficiently. We've introduced a set of automation where we're actually pre-populating devices in a new Discover workflow. So users can go into that Discover workflow and interact with it and bring those devices all into production as they see fit in a more elegant way. Also, we've introduced new logic, which presents parser recommendations and all the out-of-the-box content that comes with those parsers so customers can then configure those faster and then get to detection quicker. And then last but not least, it's really about then enabling the users to add the additional enrichment and context so they can get the full view into their landscape. So, Sorry about that. So with that, there we go. A little bit of technical difficulties, nothing like having a live session where we get into that. So let's talk a little bit about what the UI looks like and how it actually inter how the customer's experience has been improved so much. The first is now you see a new tab where it's the Discover Workflow. And this is where you're actually seeing all the devices pre-populated as it's being read from all, as the data is being read from the logs and represented into the UI. Customers are now able to see the number of devices by product category. They can add those devices in by bulk. They also have a new capability where they can actually mute a device or a set of devices. So say those devices aren't ready for production and you don't want to send that EPS into Sniper. You can now mute that and uh, temporarily pause that and control that capability as, as you see fit. As you selected the, after you selected the devices, now you go into the preview mode in the same, uh, same screen where now you're able to see the parsers, you're able to adjust time zones, and you're actually able to see a confidence interval where you're seeing in this, where you're seeing the number of lines parsed and a color indicator to show you a confidence interval of, is it the right parser? You can do that on a per device level. You can also do it across all devices that you have selected in, in, in your view. So giving customers a lot more capability and a lot more control and flexibility in how they configure their devices and how they want to do it either in a bulk fashion or in a per device fashion. 
After you've done that, you move right into the next view where you're able to see the use cases and you're able to see that inventory of available use cases. So here you're seeing all the policies that are tied to that device. You're quickly able to see if they're all enabled. You can make decisions based off of what use cases you want, to if you want to disable those or enable them. You can also create new policies. And then last but definitely not least is you're able to have visibility into threat models. And for all of our great customers, you know that threat models are our most advanced detection mechanisms. These threat models require multiple data sources so we can surface the more advanced threats. In, in this view, you're able to understand if that's applicable to the device and if it's valid based off do you have the, all the right data sources coming into it. And you can then make the decision if you need to add more data sources accordingly, but you get the validation in the UI itself. So as you can see, we've greatly simplified the entire process of bringing data into the platform given our users much more control in terms of how they interact with the devices, enabling them to do things at bulk levels, and really giving them the ability to get to value faster. With that, I want to jump into Activity Monitor and talk a little bit about the, this new module, which has come about based off a lot of feedback from our customers, which we always like to listen to and respond to accordingly. Customers want to have visibility into the type of data that into the type of data that's coming into the platform, and they want to be able to understand how that's happening over time so they can make more effective decisions. And this is really what we've done with Activity Monitor, where we're now delivering a very intuitive interface that customers can drill down into, where you now can see the overall data sources that are coming in by log type over time and by ingester, the origination itself. Now you're able to drill down into this. You can select top, your top devices that are coming in. You're able to drill down by a uh, type of log source that's coming in. You're able to drill into areas of investigation and look at things over time. And I've got some screenshots that highlight that. In this view, you're able to see the trend. So you're able to drill down into small time frames of 24 hours, and you're able to expand up to a year. So you're really able to be able to take a step back and understand what's happening over time with my EPS across all of my devices. Where is it growing? Where is it dropping off? Where am I seeing those trend lines? Are there, are there areas I want to go further investigate in the device and make modifications to so I can adjust the amount of data that's coming in? Also, you're able to see if you're seeing adjust, it spikes or valleys happening across that. And again, you're able to do that across all of your devices or a subset based off of what you want to look for. In addition to that, we have a, a series of filtering capabilities to really give you that granular visibility into the type of data you're searching for. For instance, you can filter by log source. So say I'm just looking for specific sources in, in a cloud type, whether it's AWS, Google Cloud, what have you, or if I'm looking for more for more traditional classic log sources like Cisco or other network devices. I'm also able to drill down into the ingester itself. So for customers that have ingesters in the cloud, on-prem or multiple data centers, you're able to look at that, that uh, perspective. And then last but definitely not least, for our, our MSSP partners, you're able to do this across multiple customers and multiple tenants, giving you greater visibility across that footprint so you can make more informed decisions and have a, a broader comprehensive view of everything. So Activity Monitor is a new module that comes out in Jupyter. We're very excited about it. We're excited to get into the hands of our customers. We've had great feedback from our beta users, and we want to thank everybody that's participated in, in those beta sessions already. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is, is data dictionary. And if you take a step back and you think about it, as a user in Sniper, I may be interacting in search. I may be interacting with a use case. I'm following up on an investigation. In all these scenarios, event attributes are really important to my task at hand and what, and what I'm trying to surface in the product. These event attributes should be tied back to a consistent label. The label, at the end of the day, needs to be consistent by product category and agnostic to the vendor so that you're not having to worry about doing all this mapping between all these different um, technologies and capabilities. And that's what we've delivered with Data Dictionary. And as you can see in the graphic on the right and the example, it's you're showing the concept of proxies and, all the diff and some of the different makes and models of these proxies and the associated event attributes and how they label it in their, in their machine. What you don't want to have to do is manage all that in the product. That's time consuming and it's, it's going to open you up for risk. What we've done is create an abstraction layer in Data Dictionary where we've now standardized it. And in this case, it's the request method. And that's what you're mapping to. And what you'll see is that's holistically available throughout the product. So wherever your analysts are in, your detection engineers are working through, it's one consistent label that you're working with. So it's going to give you a more holistic uh, look and feel and experience. And it's going to prevent you from having any erroneous issues and, and misses and gaps. 
In addition to that, that label is customizable. So if you don't like that name and you want to call it something more intuitive for your organization, you can adjust it accordingly. So a lot of great things have gone into standardizing this and making sure it is comprehensive across the product so our customers get that right experience. And for our existing customers, you know, here's just a snapshot of the before and after that you're going to see with Data Dictionary. You know, in some cases, you've used variables such as custom string one. And that's not as intuitive as the actual label you care about. So now those labels, which may be a little less informative, are now going away. And you're going to be working with the actual label that's tied to that event attribute, as I've noted before. So a great new capability, excited about it, and, and available in the Jupyter release. With that, I want to shift into detection and response and talk more about the tooling and technology we've delivered for our customers and some of the great new capabilities that are available. The first is live alert channel. You know, at the end of the day, what's happening is we're seeing that the attacks in the wild are growing. You know, we're seeing more announcements on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, and that's something that we all have to be in front of and, and addressing in many ways. And Nanda Santana will be covering some of the new services and capabilities that we have on this as well. But at the end of the day, what we've enabled in here is a new f feature which enables users to go search for IOCs in the product itself. And it's got a lot of capabilities. And it really starts with the fact that it's looking, it gives you visibility in the streaming events. This is not a point in time tool. This is a streaming event tool. So you're able to look at data in real time as it's flowing into the product and interrogate that data and understand what's happening in there. You're able to build and save channels. And you can build and save these channels. Typically, you're going to build them around the types of threats and attacks that are coming into the, your environment. And you can share them as well, so you can improve collaboration within your organization. And then really, what this is giving you the ability to is detect IOCs with search expressions. You know, and these IOCs can be things that you're, you're finding you know, that are available um, you know, in the market today, or if they're being passed on by the Securonics threat and content team as well. And, enable, and, and also what it does, it enables this new service I mentioned a moment ago that our threat and content team is now delivering as an augmented offering to our customers, which is great and really augments your SOC and gives you better visibility into those threats in the wild. So let's talk a little bit about how that looks in the UI and some of the capabilities here. So this is a screenshot of live channel where you're seeing streaming data coming in. And as the first view that you see is you see the, the actual channels themselves. And you're able to save those channels, and you're going to see those typically um, populated by the type of threat action or the, the type of threat you're looking for. Also, you're able to apply filters. So say you start doing a search, and you identify that it's in a certain data source, and you want to broaden that search for other Windows domains in this case. So you can actually go in and click that filter and add that in. And then this last view is really the search box, which is really the power of what type of things you're searching for. You can do ephemeral searches, where I'm looking for something at this point in time. I can look for attack patterns. And then for those more sophisticated threat hunters, you can put in complex queries where you're able to really surface advanced attacks. And as you surface them, you can turn those into incidents and, and turn those into cases where you, your team can act upon and pull that evidence in. So giving our analysts a much more comprehensive capability and being able to leverage this tool into their workflow from a daily perspective. So a lot of great uh, um, functionality in this live channel. And it's also multi tenant aware for our uh, MSSP partners as well. Next, I want to talk about Tabular View and Spotter. You know, this, is the this is based off of feedback we've gotten from our, our customers where they say, look, when our analysts are in the product doing their job, we want to give them a more customizable, intuitive UX so they can go through the data faster and be able to get to the results quicker so they can get to response. And this is more oriented around the actual data sources themselves. And giving the tabular view really gives you that ability to orient the eyes in a more elegant way to the data, you know, scan the data faster, find the information, compare it, and just respond to it quicker than the card view we've had in the product to date. And I'll show you in the next screenshot how you can actually customize it and make it more powerful. Here, you're able to go in and customize the columns that you want to um, build for. And again, this will be based off of the type of data source you're building for in many cases. Um, and what are you looking for and what do you want to surface? You can then go in and customize that. And even more important, you can save that view. You can share that view. And now you're improving collaboration. So you can have default views for the analysts. You can have default views for groups. You can have just sharing between users as well. So you know, improving collaboration, improving the overall interface that you're operating in, and giving our analysts you know, what they've been asking for is that modernized UX and that uh, visual UI that they need so they can, make, they can find the data faster. So we're excited about Tabular View, and, and you know, we appreciate the feedback from the customers that have driven the, this new feature and capability. 
Next up is on-demand case creation. Cases are obviously you know, something that come about as, as the policies and threat models trigger today. What we've heard from customers is that there are times when you know you need to be able to create a case because you've received a phone call that there's a phishing attack. You know you see something during an investigation that's of interest, and you want to create a case so you can further your investi your investigation process. And you know you create those cases, and then you do more work and you add evidence to them as well. So what we've built here is on-demand case creation, where now analysts are able to create those cases throughout the product. You know, based off of whatever use case comes up. Obviously, you know, many of those uh, cases will be fired off of policies, but then now what's happening is as you get other inputs or other areas of, of concern that you want to go create that case and investigate, you now have the ability to do that. And you know, it follows the same workflow we have in case management today, where you're able to create the case, assign it, and assign the workflow as well so they can follow suit. You can attach, you know, all the associated evidence that you need as well, whether that's the events, files, screenshots, et cetera, so that you can then have the right evidence chain in the system so that as you continue your investigation, you have the right chain of custody and information at your fingertips. And the last item I want to cover is, is you know, one of the more exciting capabilities we've delivered, which really brings together the concept of detection and response, which is what customers have been asking for is, how do I rapidly respond to threats when, when surfaced? And how can I take automated actions so I can get better efficiency out of my SOC and standardize on certain types of attacks? And that's really what we've done with this augmentation of EDR integrations with Sniper. So we've always had EDR integrations and we continue to build on that. What we've done in this release is brought more integrations into the system, deeper integrations, and broaden the aperture on the number of EDR partners that we work with. And in bringing that in and bringing that data in and combining it with the analytics that we surface, you know, it's the one in one makes three capability that we deliver to our customers. You're going to get better detection efficacy, which is going to give you a higher if, uh, confidence interval to take response actions and ultimately automate that. And we've created automated playbooks with out of the box capabilities that customers can take, a, take advantage of. And again, we've made it multi tenant aware. You know, and in this graphic here, you kind of get a visual of exactly what we've built which again, you've got the, 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 the Sniper Analytics platform. It's ingesting EDR data. We're bringing that information in. We're combining it into threat models. And we're surfacing these, these more ad advanced attacks. And we're taking advantage of a series of response mechanisms that we've built that are now brought in. And here's a snapshot of just some of the items that we've built for some of these EDR partners, where now we can take actions. You can quarantine hosts. You can isolate hosts. You can delete files. You know, you can, uh, explode, uh, you can explode files in a sandbox environment in the EDR and actually understand what's happening. So you can do a series of, uh, of response mechanisms, and you can combine these response mechanisms to meet your needs, and you can then automate these through playbooks so that you can get to the, that response faster and deliver um, an improved MTTR for your customers and your business. So, you know, this is a snapshot of some of the great capabilities we've built. The, I want to thank the team for all the hard work they've done putting into all this development. Thank all of our partners and customers for all their contribution into it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nanda Santana, who's going to take you through some of the threat research and content. And before we go into that piece, we're going to um, hear from another great customer and some awesome feedback on um, the Jupyter features. Thank you very much.